Hello friends! Welcome back. My name is Ramon. How are you today? In today's video, we are finally getting around to testing the... The Cerave Hydrating Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Face Sheer Tint Sunscreen. This has actually been like a really hot request on the channel. I don't know why. I know this is a sunscreen that Hiram heavily recommends on his channel. It's a sunscreen that's from a brand that's really reputable. It's a really great brand just due to how they formulate their products and the ingredients they choose to include. This is no exception. I'll get into that as I discuss the ingredients, but it's a tinted mineral sunscreen. This gets me back to what the main point of this brown skin friendly sunscreen series was, which was really testing out affordable, easily accessible mineral sunscreens, which made claims of little to no white casts when applied to brown or dark skin type. So we're gonna be testing that out today. Before we get into it, if you like this series, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell. I post a lot of sunscreen related content on this channel. I have a whole playlist, whether it's just for sunscreen based formulation and ingredients or this brown skin friendly sunscreen series. So check them out if you can. And then down below in the comments, have you used this? Do you like it? This is one of the things when I posted it on my Instagram story, a lot of people were like, oh my God, I love that sunscreen. I use it all the time. So I'm hyped to try it. So so again, this is easily accessible, very affordable, kind of. This is a 50 mil product, but it's only $15. I bought this one at CVS, but you can get this at Target, Rite Aid, Walgreens, Walmart. Even the local supermarket in my area has this available. Um, so the price can vary a little bit on this, but on top of that, because it is a drugstore brand, you can probably get this for discounted prices or buy one, get one X amount off. I'm looking at the Survival website right now. They have a coupon on their website available that's like $4 off. Going off the claims, it's a mineral only sunscreen, SP. PF30 offering broad spectrum protection. This is a 10% zinc, 5.5% titanium dioxide formulation that is tinted and it claims it's claims going to be sheer with no white cast. Going down the actual Cerave product claims, they say that it's going to be non-greasy, suitable for sensitive skin, which again, Cerave's products, just with how they're formulated, they are amazing for sensitive skin types, but they are claiming it's going to be non-greasy, which we've had a little bit of issues with some of these claims. And it's with a tint that seamlessly blends into all skin tones, which is another claim that gets gets put out there a lot. But a lot of these companies be on a different level when it comes to making these claims. And I'm like, who are you testing these on? How are you testing these? So I think that that claim is feasible. And then it says at least a healthy glow on the skin without any white casting and it is tinted. So we're gonna test that out. As with all Cerave products, this facial tinted sunscreen features three essential ceramides to help restore skin's natural barrier and lock in moisture. And then it also features niacinamide and hyaluronic acid to help maintain the skin's natural moisture as well and that with all these ingredients combined it'll leave a sheer natural finish that blends seamlessly with all skin so it has great ingredients so ceramides the cholesterol all the other ingredients that Cerave normally puts in their formulations are really great to maintain protect and restore the skin's natural moisture barrier hyaluronic acid is a great humectant and to have in any skincare product honestly it's just going to help to pull moisture into the skin really make sure that you have that great hydration in the skin's layers as well as keeping your skin nice, supple, plump, dewy, niacinamide. Check out my gold standard active video for like all of here niacinamide, but it's one of those ingredients that just does a lot for the skin. It's soothing, it's great for the moisture barrier, it helps to reduce any inflammation, and it helps with texture, discoloration of the skin, so it's a great ingredient, period. It's fragrance-free, paraben-free. And then some other ingredients that I kind of want to call out in this formulation is that it has salicylic acid, which a lot of us know salicylic acid as a variation of a BHA. It's a great skin exfoliant to kind of help treat oily skin and acne-prone skin, but salicylic acid Acid. come to find out it's a great soothing agent and in itself instead of being photosensitizing to the skin actually has its own photoprotective properties to it and not saying it's a great uv protectant but i'm saying it's a great ingredient to have in sunscreen formulations to help kind of boost a little bit of that uv protection it has tocopherol aka vitamin e another antioxidant that kind of helps to boost uv protecting properties and it also has an ingredient called and i might mispronounce this phytosphingosine which i've never necessarily heard of but in this i'm using the inky decoder right now on this website, it says that it's a type of lipid that's found in the natural upper layers of the skin, aka the stratum corneum. It can be found in itself, but also as part of like the whole ceramide complex. And it also has antimicrobial properties, part of the skin's natural defense system. Overall, this product seems like it's going to be super, super lightweight. So it's going to be great for oily skin types and it has ingredients that could potentially help prevent breakouts while simultaneously also having really nourishing skin ingredients to really help treat and aid in dry skin, compromised skin types as well. So it seems like it's going to benefit a very broad spectrum unintended of skin types so is it gonna work we're gonna find out for testing this i'm gonna be testing it along with my four b's so i'm gonna be testing beard beading beat and brown skin friendly how is it gonna wear with facial hair and how is it gonna wear in my hairline is it going to work with other skin products or is it going to pill and bead when applied over different kinds of skin care how is it gonna wear underneath various types of makeup how is it going to affect the duration of makeup wear and then is it gonna work for brown skin and not just my kind of brown skin i'm talking tan dark deep skin as well they make claims 
They got models showcasing that it does blend in seamlessly, but we're gonna find out. As with all the sunscreen reviews I do, I measure out a quarter teaspoon that I apply to my face, and then depending on the level of cast or tint, I also carry that to my ears and my neck. I only say that just because some of these sunscreens be making these really bold claims, and I have to wear this out in the real world, and I'm not trying to go outside looking a mess. And I also give the sunscreen five minutes to set down after application before I go in with anything on top of it, just to make sure it's getting time to form that protective barrier and its setting so that it won't be agitated when I buff or apply products on top of it. So let's get into it. So we're back and it's the end of day four, testing out the Cerave Hydrating Sunscreen, Sheer Tint SPF 30. Let's get into me explaining each day's wear test before getting back to revisiting the claims and my final thoughts on the product. Day one was light skincare, light makeup. That was also my first day of initial application. My first thought testing the sunscreen out was the texture of this. I just tried the first aid beauty sunscreen, which if you've seen that video, and this was, I mean, it's like heavily tinted. I was very surprised by that fact in itself. Like the sunscreen itself, like it has color to it, but also it's like a very rich cream texture. I really liked the vehicle that this was in. That was my first thought. I was like, oh, like this is like more of a lotion rich cream. Besides that, I noticed there was a lot of parallels though with the First Aid Beauty. The opacity to the tint, the rich emollient nature of this. I was like having PTSD flashbacks to the First Aid Beauty sunscreen. And while it blended a lot better on the skin, I feel like it really kind of set down. So it actually adhered to the skin, it still stayed really rich in emollient, and that was an issue for me. With it being so rich in emollient, product kind of went on it really weird. I couldn't buff anything because the sunscreen itself would move, and so for makeup, I felt like I only could stipple and pat makeup in, and I used brushes, and I feel like it really affected the coverage of things, where in itself this has some opacity, some coverage to it, but I feel like I wasn't getting the same level of coverage with my concealer, and we're gonna get to that for day three. And for day two, full, full, full skincare. I'm talking levels of hydrators, creams, serums, and all that stuff underneath the sunscreen. I noticed the sunscreen went really well on top of it, regardless still. It was still really rich in emollient and creamy, but for this day, I decided I was going to blot, and you can see in the footage what the blotting was like, and I also set the sunscreen down just to see if that would affect the wear of the makeup on top of it. And again, same thing for this day. For day one and day two, the makeup was just concealer, buffed out, and bronzer, and then mattifying setting spray and powder. But again, even with blotting and setting, I, I still couldn't swipe the makeup. The sunscreen itself was still so emollient and creamy that I could only pat and stipple foundation and bronzer on top of it. Day three was light skincare, full, full B. I'm talking foundation, concealer, bronzers, powders, all that kind of stuff. With this day, it was just a couple hydrated sunscreen on top of it. I did blot and set it, and then I primed on top of it with a mattifying primer. Went on top of that with all my mattifying foundations. There's my Fenty Soft Matte Pro Filter everything else, heavy, heavy powder. This day I was able to use a sponge. So I felt because as a sponge, I'm patting makeup in, I felt that I had better control over the makeup in that I was using a very normal application with it. I feel, yeah, again, that it affected the coverage of the foundation. And what I'm gonna get back to that I talked about the previous days is I feel like whenever the applicator touched my face, instead of putting product down, it picked sunscreen up with it. And therefore I feel like I wasn't necessarily getting a lot of coverage from my foundation. And as a result, I feel like I was eliminating some coverage from the actual sunscreen itself. All my brushes you can see in the footage got this really weird layer of grime on it. That was a result of the sunscreen and the emollient ingredients in that, the foundation, and then the powder powders that I would use with it, where I could literally rub that off on a napkin and get the brush clean, but the brush itself was just so cakey and grimy. Same thing with my sponge. I feel like that transfer of sunscreen onto it really affected how product went onto it. And then again, because I was using a sponge, I was able to have a little bit more control with powder. So I was going in and low key baking just to try to get any sense of mattness and setting with the sunscreen and the foundation. It didn't last long. No matter what happened for all three days, the makeup would look good for an hour. And then after the first hour, it would all just go downhill. But we'll get to that. Then here we are day four. Day four was only skincare, which was just a few hydrators sunscreen nothing else on top of it just so you can see how it looks on bare skin and after two and some change hours i came and i did a reapplication i blotted before reapplying and this is me after the reapplication i did use a bb cushion to reapply and as you can see there was product transfer back onto the bb cushion this is supposed to be black so here we are let's get into the claims and my testing so the claims that i mentioned at the end of the video mineral only spf spf 30 broad spectrum i like higher spf values a lot of times you see uh, spf 50 plus and a lot of times those spf values are well above 50 it's just a lot of times 50 is kind of what they're able to put on the uh, packaging i prefer higher spfs just because especially if you don't put enough which a lot of people don't we'll get to that spf 30 doesn't seem like a lot to me and i really want good spf coverage if a product has a higher spf i have the assumption in my head it has a really high uva protection as well so there's that she with no white cast it definitely has no white cast 
She has a different story. We'll get to that. Safe for testing of skin, non-greasy. It's greasy. I'm gonna be upfront with that. You can see it on screen. You've seen it in the applications and it really affects makeup wear, but this is really emollient still on my skin. With the safe for sensitive skin thing, technically, yes, that's true. And with all the ingredients that CeraVe puts into their products in terms of being really, really skin barrier repairing and restoring, that's tea. I'm finding out through doing this though, that I have a sensitivity to zinc oxide, which it's a thing and that is kind of one of those things where it's like, people always demonize chemical sunscreens for being more sensitizing to the skin, but I love chemical sunscreens. It's physical sunscreens and zinc oxide that leave me with really bad irritation and dryness and dehydration in my skin. And even in this kind of really rich emollient vehicle, I find my skin after like three or four hours, it's feeling very parched, regardless of how much skincare I'm putting underneath it. Sheer natural finish that blends seamlessly with skin. I don't know what natural means to people. This is not natural to me. This is very emollient, very rich, very creamy. And I feel that while the sunscreen can stick to my skin a lot better, I don't feel like it's blending seamlessly into my skin, unless I blot or I set it with powder. And even still, like after a couple hours, I am crazy. And then sorry, made rich formulation. Love generally in all strawberry products, but I'm like, is it too rich in this kind of product? Is it too much for my skin? You can see I'm starting to break out. And I don't know if that's just a result of first aid beauty and this being so rich and emollient on my skin or just the zinc irritation that I'm facing just because this is the first time I've really done a full stretch of zinc oxide sunscreens back to back to back. So let's get to my four Bs. Beard. This, it collects in my beard. While it's not necessarily visible right now, I know for a fact if I were to go in the sun and the sun would hit this, it would have a cast that wouldn't necessarily be that blue ashy cast, but it would be like, you know, like those white powder wigs people have? It would look like that. It does collect in the mustache and beard area. You can see it, but I feel like after a little bit, it sets down a little bit. But with this reapp, I can really tell like, oh, it's really in there. Beading. It doesn't bead. In terms of texture wise, it works well with all the skincare underneath it. The thing is, it's just so rich and creamy and emollient and it does not set down. And that's not a texture I personally like in skincare with oily acne prone skin. It just feels like I have a really rich occlusive layer and I feel like it's just really greasy and sticky. Again, I, even if I set the sunscreen underneath makeup and I do the makeup and I set the makeup or I blot, after a few hours, it starts to really accumulate more sebum and oil and I feel so sticky. And I'm someone who like, I, if I feel that I get really itchy and I can't scratch my face because the minute I touch my face, I'm sticky. Beat. You heard what I said about the makeup application. Within the first hour, it looks great. After that, it all starts to go downhill. It just gets really, really greasy. I find that it really accentuates all the creasing in my under eyes and my eyelids, no matter if I prime them or not, which I primed them for day three and they still got really creasy and the shadow just like wore away in a really nasty way. And this has a specific kind of look because it is so rich and emollient. I feel like if I set it and do all these layers on top of it, those layers set into the sunscreen itself. But because the sunscreen is so rich, as soon as oil starts forming underneath it, that whole sunscreen layer just kind of like lifts up. Like remember the Kat Von D, like that thick ass foundation? Like that just like plastered to my face. It was not a cute look. As much as I tried to get it ready to put makeup on top of it, it just did not work out. And then brown skin friendly. And this comes back to it's sheer, no white cast, whatever. This gave me a lot of tease of the First Aid Beauty sunscreen where it has a tint. And the tint in itself is kind of opaque and it's low key just a sheer coverage foundation. I did some reviews and I couldn't find anyone with deeper skin tone testing this out, but I did find a lot of fair skin individuals and they're like, this is a little bit too dark for me, a little bit too orange. This shows up as a little bit too dark on my skin tone. And so for me, like the tint is a little bit too opaque to just be a tinted sunscreen. This is low key on the verge of like sheer BB cream. So with that in mind, similar to First Aid Beauty, this would be too dark for fair skin, way too light for deep skin, and it would not look good, especially if you're wearing the right amount of sunscreen. And that leads me to my next point. So many people hype this up. Some of the biggest YouTubers on this platform love the sunscreen, talk about it, recommend it. Same thing with the First Aid Beauty one, who have oily skin are a lot more fair than I am. And like, it leads me to wonder like, are they putting on enough of this? If, if I'm putting it on and being like, oh, this tint is jarring. Oh, this texture is off. Oh, this wear is so nasty. How are all the people loving this sunscreen so much and I'm not loving it? I'm seeing this concept come up a lot. Are people putting on enough of these products? Like that First Aid Beauty one, was the most jarring, horrible sunscreen experience I think I've had thus far testing all these sunscreens out. And I was just like, how do people love this? Any sunscreen formulation can be sheer and wearable and non-white casty if you don't put enough on. I'm looking at you, Biosense. So I'm just like, I want I want to know this tea. I need you to, I need someone to be testing these out the way that I test them out, putting on this semi-exaggerated amount, but the proper amount to get the protection so I, I can have a realistic sense of like, are these sunscreens actually good? Do people actually like them for the right reasons? And that's why I test these the way I test them because I want realistic factors put into place with all the other things I have going on in my life. My skin type, 
the skincare I use underneath it, the makeup I wear on top, because I'm someone who wears makeup. As someone who doesn't wear makeup all the time and as someone who understands people who want sunscreen for their skin tones, I need to be able to verify this is gonna look good on every skin tone. That's why these sheer claims, these work for all skin universal claims can kind of be a little bogus. So again, I got First Aid Beauty tees. The only pro of this is the texture of this was a lot better than the First Aid Beauty one. I feel like it really stuck to my skin in that it was able to be worked a lot better and didn't necessarily hover on my skin, but it was just so rich, so creamy that it just did not set down and I felt and looked greasy. It's not as opaque as the First Aid Beauty one, that's for sure, but it was close, I'm gonna be honest. The only difference was just the texture. And the other thing is, again, because this is similar to like a BB cream, you get the product on your fingers. I kept the paper towel I just wiped my hands off of. This is like all the excess product that was on my hands after initial application. You put this on your ears, you put this on your neck. You're, they're gonna feel greasy. There were times where I like, because it felt so greasy, I was scratching and I'd be like, oh, ew, I forgot I had some like right now, ew. And then it gets in my nails, which is the other thing. I'm just like, ooh. And that's not even with scratching. That's just with me applying it. It's all over my neck, so it's going to stain your clothes. And ideally, you want to put sunscreen in these areas. God forbid you get this on your clothes, which, Ramon tip, if you get sunscreen or foundation on your clothes, shaving cream can get it off really easily. And then because it stays on my hands, it gets all over the place. And even right now, I don't know if you can tell, my hands are still a little bit emollient, even after wiping them off, and it gets all over my phone and everything, so... No, I feel like it's really inclusive. I'm starting to get breakouts and I'm attributing that to the sunscreens themselves just because not much of my other habits have changed in terms of skincare routine. It's just this weird irony of hella greasy, but also really dehydrating. So final thoughts, is this worth it? Mm, if you have a drier skin type, this would actually work really, really well, in my opinion, so long as you are my skin tone. Same as First Aid Beauty. Oily skin types, this is really rich, really hydrating, as it says, and you can see what it looks like even after. BB Cushion took a lot of product off and a lot of the shine off, and look at what it looks like now. Setting it down, it makes the powder literally congeal to your brushes. This is kind of cheap. You can get it kind of affordable. There's coupons on the Cerave website, and also you can get this at drug stores and stuff so you can get sales and whatnot. So if you find this is worth it, get it. The SPF coverage doesn't say it's worth it to me, the size of it, it's kind of like, mm, for the price. So is this recommended by Ramon? I would say no to that, honestly. Yeah, I'm trying to find a sunscreen that works. I know sunscreen after sunscreen, I'm just like, meh, or this is horrible, or I didn't like it. I'm genuinely trying to find one that works. That's why I do these videos. So, I mean, keep the recommendations coming. This was really hyped up. I really appreciate you guys recommending it. It's not your fault it didn't work out. A lot of people like this, and that's just to show that skincare can be very subjective. It's gotta make sure you're putting enough on because I want that protection, but I also don't wanna look like this, you know? So, thanks again for watching. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more sunscreen content. Um, if you love watching me suffer, give this video a thumbs up. And down below, have you tried this? Have you had similar results to me? Or do you love this? If you love this, that's that's good. That's okay. Different skincare items can work for other people and not work for other people. That's just how the things work. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.